about arc length so here we are going to first consider what is known as a parametrized curve so a parametrized curve is given by two real valued functions on a closed and bounded interval alpha beta that are continuous and the parametrized curve the points are given by uh, the tuples x t comma y t so this is quite an abstract definition let us look at some concrete examples so the first example is a function or two functions x and y from the closed interval 0 1 to r and uh, we can and they are defined as follows so x t is given by the function 1 minus t square divided by 1 plus t square and y t is given by 2 t divided by 1 plus t square so <clears throat> so you can see if you plot this graph uh, as you go from t equal to 0 to 1 you are going to get the first quadrant of this uh, unit circle so i leave uh, leave it for you to check that what i am saying is exactly correct uh, but this is what the case is an arbitrary point that corresponds to uh, a point in 0 1 uh, a point inside this closed interval 0 1 corresponds to uh, a point in in the on the curve or on the arc uh, if you want to call it an arc so then it looks like xt comma yt so the next example is example of a parabola you have come across uh, these things uh, often in your courses uh, in coordinate geometry so so here are functions x and y are continuous functions defined on the closed interval 0 1 where x t is given by t square y t is given by 2 t and we can see that this gives a uh, point on the parabola uh, which is given by uh, say y square equal to 4x right so y square is 4 t square and x square is t square so if you multiply uh, x by uh, 4 then you get to get back y square so this is uh, this part of the parabola this arc of the parabola our goal is to determine the length of uh, the these arcs uh, c so the image of the function x t comma y t uh, on our uh, interval so 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 really speaking you would consider this as a map so let me roughly call it f from alpha beta to r2 given by f of t is equal to x t y t we know that x and y these are continuous functions and the arc that you are going to get by plotting uh, all these points as t varies in the closed interval alpha beta uh, you want to compute the length of that arc so uh, what is the length of an arc so uh, you do have some intuitive ideas so if you have an arc like this what you would like to do is that you would like to somehow stretch this curve do some uh, extraordinary thing so that it becomes a straight line and then you would use a ruler uh, to compute the length of this straight line and you would say that this is the length of this arc so there are a couple of basic assumptions that we are always going to uh, follow uh, in this lecture the first is the length of the line joining two points x1 y1 and x2 y2 is given by uh, under root x2 minus x1 whole square plus y2 minus y1 whole square uh, after reading elementary geometry this is not really a very tough assumption because this follows from pythagoras theorem so what you would how would you prove the, this kind of things is that uh, once you have this point x1 y1 uh, then and x2 y2 you will con you will pick up this point whose coordinates are x2 y1 join uh, x1 y1 uh, uh, to x2 y1 and x2 y2 to x2 y1 you will see that this is a, a right angle triangle and by applying pythagoras theorem you exactly uh, get uh, the formula that we are looking for the second assumption which is somewhat more subtle it says that uh, the curve c has to be smooth so what is a smooth curve here we are not going to go very deep into 
the study of smooth curves and things like that but for our purpose let us say that x and y are continuously differentiable functions so again as i have emphasized many a times continuously differentiable function uh, is not a function which can be differentiated continuously as long as you wish but it has this following definition that it has to be differentiable and the first order derivative has to be continuous so now uh, suppose we have uh, such a c which is the image of a function like this as we have uh, written here so if t is equal to x t comma y t uh, on the interval alpha beta then we define the we define the length of c as uh, as the integral uh, which runs from alpha to beta under root x prime t whole square plus y prime t whole square dt so this might look uh, complicated to you and i would have loved to explain this to you as i have done for areas and volumes but to understand this formula why this works it means uh, understanding of some advanced theorems in real analysis which is beyond the scope of this course so for your purpose it is good enough that you understand you uh, you understand and you memorize this formula for arc length of parametrized curves so a rough idea of how do we get this formula even though this is very rough and not uh, uh, not at all can be uh, con uh, considered as a proof of this formula so what we do is that we partition so in integration theory of integration you have seen that we always tend to partition uh, partition our initial interval that we consider so we partition our interval into n parts so here is our alpha here is our beta we call this point t0 this point tn and we uh, introduce uh, a partition which uh, which divides the whole interval alpha beta into n sub intervals n closed sub intervals so so then uh, we have n plus one points in the partition so suppose this is the this is the curve that we have uh, obtained from uh, using this formulas x t y t and we we pick up n plus one points which correspond to uh, the points on the partition so in particular pi is given by uh, xti comma yti so then what do we do we uh, so 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 we join p0 p1 by a straight line p1 p2 by another straight line p2 p3 by another straight line etc and then pn minus 1 pn by a straight line so we draw the line segments uh, p i minus 1 p n p i uh, for i equal to uh, what 1 to n and then we say that we estimate the length of this the length of this arc uh, by the sum of length of all these line segments that we have got why this works i cannot explain to you because this is beyond the scope of uh, this course uh, but this is roughly the idea and 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 what is uh, what is uh, the length of uh, say uh, the line segment uh, pi minus 1 pi so uh, so length of this is the uh, is the length of the line joining the points x ti minus 1 comma y ti minus 1 to x t i y t i and we have seen a formula like this so this is exactly given by this formula so we have n summands here so we take summation i equal to 1 to n now something interesting happens we have uh, assumed that our functions uh, our, our functions x and y are continuously differentiable so it is continuously differentiable on the closed intervals, sub-intervals, xi minus 1, xi as well. So mean value theorem applies. So uh, so let me explain one part and the other part would be clear to you. So, uh, so we have this function uh, x from xi minus 1, xi to r, which is continuous. 
and differentiable and consequently what do we have is that uh, x of uh, so this is not xi minus 1 this is ti minus 1 ti uh, so this was ti minus 1 comma ti so uh, so you have seen in your calculus one that there exists a point uh, here I have called it si si in the open interval ti minus 1 ti such that f prime or x prime here x prime of si is equal to x of ti minus x of ti minus 1 divided by ti minus ti minus 1 so this is exactly what we have uh, used uh, in order to come from here to here so x of ti minus x of ti minus 1 uh, is replaced by x prime si times ti minus ti minus 1 and uh, so similarly there exists a point ui in the open interval ti minus 1 ti uh, such that this quantity is equal to y prime times y prime of ui times ti minus ti minus 1 and and you can somehow see that uh, using our notion of Riemann sum this goes to uh, the Riemann integral of uh, what uh, of uh, what we have just mentioned above so under root x prime t whole square plus y prime t whole square dt so as I have mentioned uh, at the beginning that this is not concrete this is very vague and this I just gave you gave you this idea so that uh, so that this formula what I have written here is not completely uh, bogus to you and you have some idea of how to go about it but again uh, this is far from the uh, uh, far from a formal proof of this fact so let us look at some concrete case so so suppose we have uh, we uh, we come back to a more familiar uh, situation where we are given a graph of a function y equal to f of x and suppose that we want to here compute the arc length between x equal to a and x equal to b so what do we do here so this curve is is definitely a, a parameterized curve how do we see that we so what is a random point on this graph that is given by so if i take this point to be equal to t this will be given by t comma f of t so in particular xt is given by t yt is given by uh, f of t okay so so what is dx dt dx dt is equal to 1 uh, so now let's go ahead so what is length of c length of c is integral from a to b okay so what is our alpha beta alpha beta is exactly uh, this interval so so i can replace alpha beta by a and b and x prime t whole square y prime t whole square dt so now let me complete this formula so this is a to b what is x prime t x prime t is 1 plus y prime t this is f prime t whole square and and we have dt so 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 this is equal to dt so this is our length of this curve so you may also like to write it as integral a b under root 1 plus f prime x whole square dx so this is the same thing nothing special is going on so now suppose that we are given a curve uh, which is given by this equation x equal to gy so then we do the same thing this is also a parametric curve so suppose this point is a this point is b on the y axis and we have plotted uh, the curve x equal to gy so our alpha beta is same as a b and what is a random point on this uh, on this graph so this will be given by so first i write down the y coordinate so let me write t here so that we are clear so this is the um, point t so this 
so the corresponding point is going to be gt comma t and same things uh, uh, go on so uh, so what is x prime t x prime t is g prime t what is y prime t y prime t is equal to 1 so if i again apply this formula that we have just seen the formula for parametrized curve this is going to be integral a to b under root x prime t so this is going to be g prime t whole square plus 1 dt so if you wish just to make sure that it is consistent with this equation or if you just like it aesthetically you may write it as a to b g prime y whole square plus 1 dy so so i think this makes your job far more easier because we do not uh, really prove what we uh, we are claiming here so now let us look at a couple of examples before we finish this uh, video lecture so now we know all the formulas and it's a matter of putting out the formula uh, in our examples so first let us compute the perimeter of a circle a circle is parameterized by uh, x equal to r cos theta y equal to r sin theta as theta varies between 0 and 2 pi uh, so so let me write x theta y theta we know that these functions are uh, continuous uh, the derivative is also continuous so so we are in our context so let us compute so these are going to be theta so let us compute what is x prime theta x prime theta is minus r sine theta y prime theta is r cos theta so if we just put in the formulas so if we just put in the formulas uh, what do we get so x prime theta whole square so this is going to be r square sine square theta and y prime theta whole square this is going to be r square cos square theta and we know that sine square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1 so we are um, having r square so so it is now very easy to compute this so this is equal to r square if we take square root then we are having uh, simply r and we are integrating this over theta as theta varies from 0 to 2 pi and you can easily see that this is equal to 2 pi r so this is the perimeter of a circle uh, i have given you a proof of this fact which probably you have never seen before how to compute the perimeter of a circle but here is the proof so next so suppose we are con suppose we are considering uh, a graph of a function which is given by or a parametrized curve which is given by these two functions on the closed interval 0 to pi by 2 and uh, what is xt xt is cos cube t yt is sine cube t so just it's a matter of doing the computations mechanically so x prime t calculate x prime t y prime t compute what is x prime t whole square plus y prime t whole square put in this formula in the integral compute the integral if uh, if needed use fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 to get your answer now let us look at uh, uh, an example of what we have seen at the end a uh, uh, curve given by equation y equal to fx and we needed the fact that f has to be continuously differentiable uh, so so we know that in this closed interval 0 1 this function x to the power 3 by 2 is continuously differentiable so now all you need to do is that you have to write out uh, fx uh, as x to the power 3 by 2 can compute what is f prime x so this is going to be 3 by 2 x to the power half and then do the mechanical computations which are needed uh, in order to uh, compute the length of this arc if need be you use a fundamental theorem of calculus part 2 to get the final answer so this is all about arc lengths you will see more exercise more examples in your exercises